Greetings everybody, welcome back to Weekly Wildlife Wisdom. And so far I've been your host, Zir Yeti, and this week we're doing the North American Special. So without further ado, let's go get into it. The first animal of the week being the American Black Bear. Also simply known as the Black Bear, it is a medium-sized bear endemic to North America and the most numerous bear species on Earth. American black bears prefer to dwell in both deciduous and coniferous forests, as well as swamps and wetlands, uh, but they are also known to inhabit shrublands, scrublands, and urban environments if food is sufficient. Here they feed on a wide variety of matter, including nuts, seeds, grasses, leaves, roots, tubers, berries, and other fruit, fungi, eggs, insects, honey, fish, crustaceans, amphibians, carrion, garbage, various birds, rodents, and other small mammals, deer, elk, caribou, and even the occasional moose. Black bears are themselves occasionally preyed upon by both brown bears, as well as gray wolves, cougars, alligators, and jaguars. Uh, while both sexes average around four to six and a half feet in length, males are considerably bulkier than females, averaging around 125 to 550 pounds in weight, compared to females who measure in around 100 to 375 pounds in weight. Black bears sport large, dexterous paws tipped with short, rounded claws adapted for climbing. Uh, they are distinguished from grizzlies or brown bears by their smaller shoulder humps, proportionally broader skulls with larger jaws, and narrower muzzles. Here they, like their name suggests, black bears are usually black in color, sporting a pale muzzle which contrasts to their darker fur and may sometimes have a white chest spot. Western populations are usually lighter in color, being more often brown, cinnamon, or blonde in coloration, with some coastal British Columbia and Alaska populations being bluish gray to creamy white. The breeding season typically occurs from June to August, and although the eggs undergo delayed development and do not implant the female's womb until November, Mothers give birth to one to six cubs sometime in January to February, and said cubs remain with their mother for 16 to 18 months before they set off on their own, reaching sexual maturity around three years of age. Under ideal conditions, an American black bear may live upwards of 30 years. Next up, we have the resplendent quetzal, which is a small bird in the family Trogonidae, uh, which is native to both tropical lowland rainforests and montane cloud forests up to 10,500 feet in elevation. Throughout Mexico, Costa Rica, Panama, El Salvador, Nicaragua, Honduras, and especially Guatemala, where it is the national bird. Uh, Their diet consists primarily of flowers and fruit, particularly the avocado, as well as insects, worms, snails, tree frogs, and small lizards. Resplendent quetzals are themselves preyed upon by eagles, long-tailed weasels, kinkajous, hawks, and owls. With the head to body length of 14 to 16 inches and averaging around 7 to 8 ounces in weight, they are the largest species of trogon. Uh, and like their relatives, sport relatively small heads with, lo- with large eyes that help them to navigate the dim light of their forest home. They have an iridescent green body with a red lower breast and belly, which, depending on the light, can shine a vibrant green, cobalt, lime, yellow, or even ultramarine. Their most recognizable features is that of their green tail streamers, which can reach upwards of 30 inches in mature males. Males additionally sport a helmet-like crest, and all sexes have a short yellow to gray bill. They typically live alone or in pairs, with the mating season lasting from March to June, during which time females lay one to three pale blue eggs in a nest placed in a hole, which they carve into a rod tree upwards of 200 feet above the forest floor. Both parents take turns in incubation with their long tail coverts folded uh, forwards over and out of the hole giving them the appearance of a bunch of ferns growing out of the tree hole as opposed to a bird's nest. The incubation period lasts 17-19 days during which time the male generally incubates the eggs during the day while the female usually incubates them at night. The young fledge around three weeks after hatching, but may continue to closely associate with their parents until they reach sexual maturity around three years of age. Under ideal conditions, a resplendent quetzal may live upwards of ten years. Next up is the bighorn sheep, which is a species of wild sheep native to North America, 
where it can be found throughout the Sierra Nevada and Rocky Mountains, as well as the Great Basin, Mojave, Sonoran, and Chichewan deserts from as far north as British Columbia, Canada, to as far south as Baja, California, Mexico. Here the bighorn sheep feed upon grasses, shrubs, and cactus fruit, living and traveling in large herds that are rather unique among sheep species in that they do not follow a dominant male and in fact lack a distinct social hierarchy for much of the year. Bighorn sheep are preyed upon by coyotes, bobcats, gray foxes, wolverines, jaguars, ocelots, lynx, uh, golden eagles, bears, wolves, and especially mountain lions. There is notable sexual size dimorphism, with females averaging 4 to 5 le- feet in length and 30 to 35 inches tall at the shoulder, uh, weighing around 75 to 200 pounds. Uh, they are significantly smaller than males, which average around 5 to 6 feet in length, 30 to 40 inches tall, and 125 to 315 pounds in weight. Males additionally have significantly larger and more curved horns than females, and skulls which, are, which sport in large coronal and frontal sinuses and internal bony septa. These adaptations serve to protect the brain by absorbing the impact of clashes. Both sexes range in color from light brown to grayish or dark chocolate brown, with a white rump and lining on the backs of the forelegs. Breeding typically occurs from October to December, during which times males will famously fight one one another over females. After a six-month pregnancy, a female typically gives birth to one to two calves, which remain with their mother for the next four to six months. Under ideal conditions, a bighorn sheep may live upwards of 15 years. Next up is the rainbow trout, which is a species of salmonid native to the cold water tributaries of the Pacific Ocean throughout Asia and North America, where uh, it has also been introduced to the eastern United States. Uh, Southern Europe, Australia, New Zealand, and South America. There are two forms of rainbow trout. The stream form, which lives its life entirely in freshwater rivers and lakes, and the steelhead, which leaves freshwater as juveniles to mature in the ocean before migrating back to freshwater to spawn. Both varieties of trout are predators that feed upon insects, crustaceans, fish, amphibians, worms, reptiles, squid, and carrion. Adult stream trout average around 1.5 to 2.5 feet long and 2 to 8 pounds in weight and are typically smaller than their ocean-going relatives, which can grow upwards of 4 feet in length and 40 pounds in weight. However, certain freshwater lake populations can also reach considerable sizes at upwards of 3 feet long and 20 pounds in weight. Stream forms are usually blue or green with uh, black spotting over the length of their body and a broad reddish stripe along the lateral line which is most pronounced in breeding males. Lake-dwelling and ocean-going forms are usually more silvery in color, with with the reddish stripe almost completely being gone. Um, Both forms of rainbow trout typically spawn in the spring, during which time they travel to clear-bottomed streams, congregating in large numbers. Here the female deposits 208,000 eggs in a 4-12 to inch deep nest, which are then fertilized by a male and covered with gravel. Hatching normally takes one to four months after spawning, and the growth of rainbow trout varies markedly depending on the environmental factors and genetic makeup of the fish. Uh, In small streams, the rainbow trout may spawn at two to three years of age, while steelheads generally spend three years in freshwater and two years at sea before returning to spawn. Once maturity is reached, trout may spawn annually or skip a year or two between spawning again. Uh, under ideal conditions, a rainbow trout may have upwards of 11 years. And next up, we have the Mossasaga, also known as the Mossasaga rattlesnake, the Mossasaga rattler, the ground rattler, the snapper, the gray rattlesnake, the black rattlesnake, the swamp rattlesnake, or the little rattlesnake. It is a rattlesnake species found throughout the Midwestern North America from southern Canada to northern Mexico, uh, where they inhabit a wide range of habitats including grasslands, forests, scrublands, swamps, and marshes, typically along a source of water such as a river or creek. In fact, the name Masasaga means Great River Mouth in the Chippewa language. They feed upon small mammals, frogs, small birds, insects, arachnids, millipedes, centipedes, lizards, and other snakes. 
Mosasagas themselves are preyed upon by raccoons, foxes, hawks, herons, and other snakes, such as racers and milk snakes. Like other rattlesnakes, the venom of the Mosasaga is a cytotoxic venom which destroys tissue and contains specialized digestive enzymes that disrupt the blood flow and prevent clotting. While potent and painful, this snake's venom is rarely lethal to humans if proper medication is obtained. Um, and to this day, the Mosasaga has only been responsible for two confirmed human deaths. Mosasagas average around 24 to 30 inches in length, sporting a thicker body and smaller head compared to most other rattlesnakes. Their coloration consists of rows of dark gray or black, irregular blotches running down the length of their back on a background color of gray, gray-brown, or brown. These dark blotches and tail stripes often outline a lighter, are often outlined in a lighter scale color, making them stand out. Breeding occurs twice a year in both spring and fall, and after a three and a half month gestation period, mothers will give live birth between five and 20 offspring. The young will remain with their mother inside of the burrow or under a fallen log for up to one week before setting off on their own. Under ideal conditions, the Mosasaga will reach sexual maturity around three to four years of age and may live upwards of 20 years. Next up is the Canada Lynx, also known as the Canadian Lynx. It is a medium-sized North American feline that is native to Alaska, Canada, and the northern areas of the contiguous United States, where it inhabits boreal forest and alpine woodland up to 14,140 feet in elevation. Here they live a mostly nocturnal life, feeding upon uh, primarily snowshoe hares, only occasionally supplementing this diet with other prey such as ducks, geese, grouse, Moles, ptarmigan, red foxes, American red squirrels, voles, and young doll sheep, young mule deer, and young caribou. Canadian lynx are themselves preyed upon by gray wolves and coyotes. Averaging around 24 to 42 inches long and 19 to 22 inches tall at the shoulder and 11 to 37 pounds in weight, the Canadian lynx is a lean, mid-sized cat characterized by its long, dense fur, triangular ears with black tufts at the tips, and broad, snowshoe-like paws. Like other big cats, Canadian lynx are primarily solitary animals, with minimum social interaction except for the bond between mothers and their offspring and the temporary association between individuals of opposite sexes during the mating season, which lasts from March to April. After a two- to three-month gestation period, a mother Canadian lynx will typically give birth to a litter of one to eight kittens. These kittens are born blind and completely dependent on their mother, only emerging from the den at around five weeks of age. They are weaned by 12 weeks and begin hunting at between seven and nine months of age, eventually leaving their mother at around 10 to 12 months of age. Under ideal conditions, the Canadian lynx will reach full maturity at around two to three years of age and live upwards of 25 years. And our extinct animal is the pteranodon which is an extinct genus of pterosaur that lived throughout the late Cretaceous period some 88 to 80 million years ago throughout the Western Interior Seaway, a shallow sea that covered the middle of what is now North America during the late Cretaceous and early Paleocene epochs. Pteranodon was the first pterosaur found outside of Europe, with Othniel Charles Marsh uncovering the first remains, consisting of wing bones and a partial shoulder girdle, within the Smoky Hill Chalk Deposits of Kansas in 1871. Initially, Marsh named the find Pterodactylus owini, assigning it to the European genus Pterodactylus, only to learn said name was already in use for Henry Seeley's European pterosaur, Pterodactylus owini, in 1864. Marsh then renamed his giant North American pterosaur Pterodactylus occidentalis, Meanwhile, Edward Drinker Cope also unearthed several specimens of the large North American pterosaur from Kansas, using them to name two new species in 1872, Ornithochirus ermbrosus and Ornithochirus hypiara, assigning them to the European genus Ornithochirus. In 1876, fossil collector Samuel Wendell Wilstonson, or Williston, unearthed the first pteranodon skulls which showed that the animals lacked teeth and had a bony crest on their skulls. Marsh recognized that these major differences warranted the creation of a new genus which he dubbed pteranodon meaning toothless wing in Greek. Today two species 
uh, Pteranodon sternbergi and Pteranodon longiceps are considered valid, with the pterosaur Genosternbergia macini, or maci, possibly representing a third species. With over 1,000 known specimens, Pteranodon is by far the best studied pterosaur. With all species showing a marked sexual dimorphism, with females sporting 12 foot wingspans, wide pelvic canals, small round head, rounded head crests, and males sporting 20 foot wingspans, narrow pelvic canals, canals, and very large straight crests, which were pre- proudly for which were probably for display. I'm sorry for stumbling over my words. Tranon lived primarily on offshore rockeries. Uh, within the western interior seaway where they could nest away from land-based predators and feed far from the shore upon fish and cephalopods, possibly catching them via plunge diving into the water from the air in a manner similar to that of modern seabirds such as the gannet. Pteranodon shared its habitat with a plethora of other animals, including sharks, ammonites, giant sea turtles, plesiosaurs, toothed birds, mosasaurs, and other pterosaurs. As always, take care to my guys, gals, and my binary pals. Have a wonderful day.